Reggie Bush. Reggie wants his Heisman title back, badly. And what if I told you that because of some pretty massive developments, the story of Reggie's stripped Heisman title isn't over. It's one of the most important stories to ever happen in college sports, and it left behind a confusing legacy for a team and a star. With massive shifts in what it means to be a student athlete, the time to revisit this story is now. Reggie Bush, still on his <laughs> Reggie Bush was a highlight machine dating back to his high school days. It helped that his high school quarterback was eventual Heisman candidate and NFL quarterback, Alex Smith. Reggie Bush. While in high school, Bush was recruited by a number of teams, including USC, which had lost its edge throughout the 90s. The program was far from its dominant roots and was getting beat up by major rivals like UCLA and Notre Dame. The program hired Pete Carroll, who recruited quarterback Matt Leiner and Bush using the flashy LA scene to his advantage. University of Southern California. Congratulations. Reggie Bush going to USC. And in 2003, when Leiner took over for Carson Palmer, the Trojan dynasty took form. After losing in triple overtime to Cal, the Trojans went on a 10-game win streak that resulted in a 28-14 beatdown of Michigan in the Rose Bowl. Bush was built for stardom. He was on the right team, with the right coach, in the right town, with an incredible skill set. Plus, he was likable, nice, and very good at football. The opportunity and magnetism of Bush attracted two shady figures, Michael Michaels and Lloyd Lake. We'll get back to them, but first you need to see what the Trojans did in 2005. Bush dominated, Liner dominated, Lendell White dominated, the USC defense dominated, Notre Dame got sad about a push, and UCLA ate dirt. It was the peak of great football in LA. Bush won the Heisman Trophy over Liner in Texas's Vince Young. It was the crowning of college football's most exciting player on the most exciting team. One thing left, a national championship. USC brought a 35 game win streak into the Rose Bowl. But remember this guy? Yeah, this guy had something to say. Vince Young led Texas through one of the greatest national championships of all time that concluded the USC reign and put UT on top. After the loss, Bush declared for the NFL draft, where he was likely to go in a first round that featured DeBrickashaw Ferguson, A.J. Hawk, Mario Williams, Jay Cutler, Antonio Cromartie, and fellow Trojan Matt Leiner. But days before the draft, there was one massive, earth-shattering question that came up. Who owns this house? This was where Reggie Bush's mother and stepfather, Denise and Lamar Griffin, lived during the 2005 season. But there was a big issue. In late 2004, state records showed that the house in Spring Valley, California was purchased for just shy of a million dollars by this guy, Michael Michaels. And Michaels was the only name on the deed. After Michaels had facilitated the move-in, he reached out to sports agents alongside colleague Lloyd Lake to facilitate Bush's professional representation. Now, there's an interesting twist with Michaels. He was a part of the Siquan tribe and served as a business development officer for the tribe's many enterprises in San Diego. In court filings, Lake said that New Era Sports and Entertainment would be tied to the tribe, but the tribe denied any role in the sports marketing company. New Era never really formed past corporate filings in California, and Bush signed with a different, established sports agent and marketing firm, something that pissed off Michaels and Lake. Just before the draft started, reporters documented Bush's family moving out of the house. Trucks came by, loaded up, and shipped out. And the house was left empty. The New Orleans Saints select Reggie Bush, running back, USC. It was a big moment and a big payday for the star running back, but headaches were just around the corner. In 2006, reports that Bush and his family received improper benefits sparked an investigation with USC asking the Pac-10 to lead the charge. That year, Michael sued Bush's family for $3.2 million for failing to pay rent and financing their travel to USC road games. And by 2007, Lake also sued the Bush family for almost $300,000 in what he claims are cash and gifts he gave to the family. 
Michaels contended that he was approached by Bush's stepfather, Lamar Griffin, to be an investor in the New Era Agency. He claimed that his reason for letting the Griffins live in the house was because he'd be compensated once the agency took off alongside Reggie's pro career. That never happened, so Michaels and Lake sought revenge. Reggie denied knowledge and involvement in the formation of the company, the arrangements made with his family, and any agreement to join New Era Sports and Entertainment. But the damage was done, as the NCAA used information from Michaels and Lake to build a case against Reggie. Soon after, the public perception that he skirted NCAA rules was sealed, and the fallout was swift for both Bush and USC. In 2010, the NCAA, specifically Paul D., please remember that name because it will blow your mind later, announced the following sanctions. USC would have to vacate the last two wins of its 2004 season, including the Orange Bowl victory and all of the wins from the 2005 season, and would be banned from bowl games in 2010 and 2011 and lose 30 scholarships over three years. The university would be forced to dissociate itself from Bush permanently. The Heisman Trust stripped Bush of the title, and the running back returned the legendary trophy. The Trust has left the 2005 Heisman winner spot vacant. But they were rumored to have offered the award to Vince Young and then Matt Leinart after Bush returned it. Both of them turned the offer down. In all, the events were an absolute wipeout of a legacy, a moment in college football, a historic program. But that was over a decade ago, and there's been big changes in what this story is. In 2020, the NCAA introduced a rule change that capped dissociations at the 10-year mark and left it up to the schools after that point. It more closely mimicked the 10-year ban Chris Webber faced from the Fab Five scandal at Michigan. A deep dive will have coming soon, so subscribe. USC welcomed back Reggie as a celebrated alum. Bush loved USC, and they loved him too, despite any arbitrary ruling by the NCAA. Great moment, but let's talk about that Heisman Trophy the blank 2005 title, the hardware that Reggie had to physically give back. Here's one character we haven't talked about, USC's former running back coach, Todd McNair. In 2010, the NCAA determined that McNair was aware of Reggie's alleged violations. Having McNair tied to Bush was key for the NCAA because it opened the door to punish the university, not just the player. McNair sued the NCAA for defamation stating that they ruined his career to further their agenda. So why did the NCAA want these documents sealed? Well, the 400 plus page file reveals some pretty biased and charged language. Emails to and from voting members of the Committee on Infractions, which was led by Paul D., brought up unfounded allegations of McNair being involved in dogfighting, having an affair, and more. McNair argues that these communications prove the NCAA was digging for a way to punish him and USC. And after 10 years of litigation, the NCAA threw in the towel and according to Reggie, had to pay $8 million to the former assistant coach. All of the NCAA's evidence being so weak that they had to pay McNair $8 million has emboldened Reggie to speak out about the scandal. He recently pointed out on I Am Athlete that the NCAA built their case on Michaels and Lake, two individuals that had been angered by Reggie's decision to not join their sorry excuse for a sports agency two individuals that were actively suing Bush's family. Reggie summed it up best when he said, Lloyd Lake had a criminal history as long as a cheesecake factory menu. If the NCAA just did their homework, that's all we ask for. Just do a little homework. Do the situation justice because that's what it deserves. It was just very sloppy. I mean, they didn't even interview his parents according to Reggie. Then there's Paul D who oversaw the investigation. Does the name ring a bell? You sure it doesn't? Paul D. served as the athletic director at the University of Miami and oversaw one of the largest, most widespread lack of institutional control in college sports history. It featured a scheme that federal officials called perhaps the largest centralized fraud ever committed in the history of the Pell Grant program. Over 400 k in improper payments to Miami football players, skirted drug testing, and impermissible benefits to 72 players from Booster Nev Shapiro all under Paul D's reign. 
and he was the guy given the job to oversee this investigation? He was the guy that famously said, high profile players merit high profile enforcement? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? He was the one who led the investigation. Yeah. Looking back now, there's just too much garbage around this investigation. With a more modern understanding of student athletes and the business of college sports, with the introduction of NIL rules that allow college athletes to profit off of their image, can we really sit here and say, nah, Reggie doesn't deserve the Heisman. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed it. And if you want more of our storytelling, subscribe to our newsletter linked in the description. Talk to you soon.